Okay, here we'll have another attempt at an iPad video. This one is for GMT's 30 Years War, Europe in Agony, which despite being a game from 2001, I only just got the other day from a chat in Spain. And as you can probably see, it's in absolutely mint condition. I was very pleased despite the very heavy 20 euro postage. Uh, as a brief look at the cards, um, they're sitting on little things I printed off, uh, I think it was Board Game Geek. It's just separate the decks out nicely. Uh, decks are divided into early war, intervention, and then apocalypse. Um, oops, pardon my skills here. As you can see, the turn and general records track. And I'm only on turn two, which is 1623 or 22 to 23. A um, couple of queries in the game I had of asking Board Game Geek. Mainly one I was a bit um, confused by the foraging. It's easy enough to place the pillage markers, which is a nice effect in the game. Very 30s years war. But I wasn't sure why you rolled for them in the moon phase or at the end of the phase, but apparently it's done in a looting phase, which is straightforward enough. Another one I'm quite confused by is Spinola has a Siege of Breda card once he's in the United Provinces, i.e. Holland. Um, not very clear in the rules whether it's conducted as a normal siege. It would appear to be simply because the back of the siege counter has Breda fallen and the Protestant um, have a recovered Breda, so one assumes it's done like that. However, since Breda and another one, um, I can't remember the name of the other one, it begins with B as well, are both card effects. Um, they're not actually cities on the map because United Provinces is a sort of special section of the Dutch don't actually take part in the war, they really just provide money to the Protestants. Uh, key things that happened early in the game. Uh, down in Bavaria, Tilly moved against Mansfield, uh, actually in Bohemia at that time, and Tilly and his compatriot both died, been replaced by lesser counters. Um, Mansfield has Invest at Ingolstadt. He's had a couple of goals of the season. It hasn't managed to. Did take a step loss. This turn one stand has just appeared. I'm not sure if I can zoom in on him. It's not very clear there. But that is him at the top of that stack. He's uh, just come on board. There's been quite a lot of uh, looting and pillaging this time because the Catholics have lost due to the card play of the Protestants. The Valentine passes, so therefore they're not getting their Spanish money. This has left them with a number of stacks that had to roll on the looting and pillage table. Um, despite that they didn't lose too much, however the, the more well funded in some ways Protestants did. The veteran English unit, which you can see there just about in around Mannheim, arrived last turn um, wasn't able to be paid, managed to roll for a level 2 pillage and a step loss, so not good for them. Still a number of neutrals on the board. VPs are supposed in favour of Protestants, we're only at 8, although it's quite early in the game. Quite a lot of nice things in it, France is in it. Again, they're sort of special case, you can't really enter France, but the French can enter here. Provide a lot of gold for the Protestant cause. There's various popes that can change. Three of them are pro-Catholic, one pro-Protestant, which just seems a bit strange. <laughs> Especially for an Ulsterman. Um, the Danes, Christian, has just come into the game last turn. He, uh, they can't recruit, so there's just the four steps once they go. A nice feature of the game is that you can recruit new units at either half or full strength, but you can't build up units that are already on, so once they're gone to half strength, that's them, and once they're out of the game, as in these chappies here, they're out of the game. The green ones, which are a bit fuzzy again in the video, were Bethlehem Gavor's lot in Hungary, which um, Imperialists came over, mugged him twice, took over Hungary, uh, killed him, which takes the Hungarians out of the game, so... Not great for the Protestants in the initial turn, however, so with the loss of Tilly and Worth, I think it was, 
uh, well, maybe it was Mercy, but both two good commanders that has put a crimp in the Bavarian Catholic League. However, over in Spain, we have Spinola up in the United Provinces, um, besieging Breda. Well, Christian is one of the better, in fact, if not the best. Other known Swedish Protestants has also went in to save things. And Cordoba has arrived in the Spanish Netherlands with a fairly sizable force. Uh, there's three types of units. There's veterans, who are the best but can't be recruited. There's mercenaries who should be recruited but do take more payment. And then there's militia who are quite cheap but have the lowest combat factors in the game. Very nice, some nice cards. Um, as you can see here, they're nicely coloured. There's some that when you use once and discard in the game, others can be used for various things. It's the usual. There's a Protestant deck and a Catholic deck, the blue being the Protestant. Um, pretty much like any CGD, the value in the top left in the shield is the value of the leader. It can activate the card. At the bottom, again, you can't see it in this video, is the amount of foreign aid that they're given, which you pay troops with, and then the various events in the middle. So, overall, solo game, but I'm enjoying it very much. Um, a game I've been looking to get for ages, and hope to play some more of it over the next couple of days while I'm off.